Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Ever After Paper Crafts and today I have a super fun Halloween card to share with you. This is the card we're going to be working on today and I just love this cute little image. It is so sweet. Um, so here's the stamp set that we're using. It's called Which Way is the Candy and it's from My Favorite Things. This is actually um, an older set that has been revamped and re-released by My Favorite Things and I am so glad that they re-released it because I wasn't lucky enough to own the original so it was awesome that this came back out. It is such an adorable stamp set. I just can't get enough of it. So <clears throat> let me pull the card back up again. And I want to focus for a minute on the background. I created a watercolor background using purple and gold watercolor paints. I also painted the moon using black and silver watercolor inks, or paints rather. So if you look at it closely, you can really see a whole lot of shimmer and shine on that background. Now, I happened to create this, this exact background and a moon very similar to this one in a previous video. So today I'm not going to focus on the watercolor background background. Um, I actually, I will link you to the video, but this is the card where I actually made this exact background. This is the exact background I made on camera with you. So I will link you to this video. It was this card where I was demonstrating how to do that background and the moon. So I will link you to that video in the description box below of this video if, in case you want to see how to do that fine shimmery watercolor background. I just love it so much. Today what I'm going to focus on mainly is how I did the coloring of this little witch who is so adorable by the way I just can't get enough of her um <laughs> she's just too cute um so I want to show you how I watercolored her I like to use watercolor painting on my images these days I'm obsessed with it but I want to show you how you can use watercolor and paint your images but still get an alcohol like um, look alcohol marker like look to your coloring with lots of shading and highlights So I thought today I would do a quick color along and then at the end kind of walk you through how I put the card together So let's go ahead and get started as I said, this is in my favorite thing stamp set So, you know that you're guaranteed to have beautiful stamps and uh, that, that stamp beautifully So I went ahead and already stamped this little witch image onto Canson XL watercolor paper Which is one of my favorite papers to work with when I'm doing watercoloring with my zigs and a water brush So let me go ahead now. Oh before I do that I wanted to also mention my favorite ink for working with watercolor painting with zigs and a water brush is this black dye ink from hero arts it dies, it dries, let me try again, it dries immediately. So you don't have to wait or hit it with your heat gun or anything. You can stamp and then literally begin your watercoloring. And I love that. Now, if you don't have this though, you can also use VersaFine Black Onyx ink. And this is available, I believe they still carry it at Michael's. I've had mine for years and it still hasn't run out of ink and I got mine at Michael's. This works perfectly as well for watercoloring. The only thing is you either have to wait a while for it to dry or you need to hit it with your heat gun because it's a more pigmented ink. So it doesn't it doesn't dry um, as quickly as the other. So you don't want to get any bleeding and you want to make sure that you dry it with your heat gun first. All right, let me go ahead and zoom in here and we're going to go ahead and start coloring this cute little witch. Um, I always recommend that you have a piece of paper towel nearby to clean off your water brush in between colors. Here is the water brush that I am using. Um, it's a very inexpensive water brush made by Zig. And why I love this one is it has a very fine point to it, which enables me to get into very small spaces and not worry about going out of the lines. Now, if you don't have a water brush, you can always use a paintbrush. However, I do recommend that you use one with a very fine tip on the end to again, enable you to get into those small spaces. To clean off your water brush in between colors, you simply take it to your paper towel and scribble it off until no more ink comes off. And that's how you do it. You don't have to squeeze it or run it under water or anything like that. It's very easy to go between colors with a, um, with a water brush. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I used just a handful of zig markers here to color this image and I will call them out as we go along. So I'm going to start with her hat today. And for her hat, as well as her cape, I only used one color and that's black and I love how I'm able to create this 
beautiful shaded, shadowed, and light space and dark space look with just one marker. It would take me several Copic markers to do this um, technique, to, to get the same effect with my coloring. Now, I am in no way bashing Copics. I love my Copics, still have a bunch of them and still use them often. But I just am obsessed with this form of coloring right now. I just find it a little bit easier to do and I'm really loving the results. And anything that lets me get gorgeous results, but also lets me get projects done fast is a keeper in my book. So I'm just laying the marker down where it's going to be darkest. Let me turn her back around quickly, just for a moment. She's kind of facing to the left. So in my mind, the light source, if it's the moon or sun or whatever your, your background is, the, whatever that light source is, it's coming in from the left. So that means everything on the right side of her body is going to be darker than the left because that light source is going to be projecting some light, therefore making the left side of the image a little bit lighter than the right. So whatever, wherever you lay your marker down is where it's going to be darkest. So I've laid the marker down, as you can see, kind of along the right side of the hat and then a little bit down here at the bottom. So that's where it's going to be darkest on this top part, top part of the hat. I also like to work in sections. So instead of just laying marker down all over the hat, I'm doing it in sections. That keeps my ink wet longer. So in other words, if I had colored the entire hat with my marker, it might dry up before I get a chance to hit it with the water. And I don't want that to happen. Also, it keeps me more organized in terms of where my shadow is coming from. And this is just the way I personally like to do it. So now I'm just taking my water brush because again, this black is the only marker color that I'm using. And I'm just going in a circular motion and pulling this black color out into the white space that we have left behind. And I'm just covering it up. And that was done incredibly quickly, but you can see how you have pulled some of that color out into the white space to create that highlighted shaded look. So there you have it. I went out of the lines just a tiny little bit right here. I did that on purpose because I want to show you even with a black marker, you can erase that. You simply clean off the tip of your water brush by scribbling it onto um, your paper towel and then with the clean water brush you push that ink back in and then dab it with a paper towel and after a couple times of going over it it's completely gone and I just absolutely love that it's you can liken it to the colorless blender if you're familiar with Copic markers um, it, it's the same technique and it does the same thing it gets that that ink that you didn't want that marker color that you didn't want that you accidentally got somewhere it gets it erases it completely so that's a nice tip so now I'm just going to go along with the rest of the hat. I'm doing this very quickly. Always remember, if you want to darken this up, you can go right back over um, the zig marker that you already laid down. So in other words, if I wanted this top hat, part of this hat to be even darker, I can lay more marker down right over top of where I put it and just do the same technique over again and pull that color out with my water brush. For the purposes of the video, so it's not too long, I'm not going to do that today, but I did do that on my final image. As you can see, her hat on my final image is a little bit darker than it is on this color, the one I'm doing live here for you. And that is simply because, like I said, I just went back over it. Same exact technique that I'm doing right now. Just going back over to get, you don't have to wait for it to dry, nothing like that. You just lay it down uh, right over top of it again. So now I'm just doing the little front brim here of the hat. And again, I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can. So and the video is not too long, but I like to do live color alongs with you guys because I feel like um, sometimes you might miss a little bit or um, the instructions might be as clear if I, you know, just kind of fast forwarded through it. I might have to change that as I go along. I know some people don't like long videos. I get some comments where folks wish my videos were shorter. So it's something I'm, I've been kind of debating um, and still thinking about. But for now, anyway, I'm doing them this way because um, I think it is helpful, especially if you're just learning with these markers. It is helpful to kind of see it in real time, or at least it is for me because I taught myself and um, I learned a lot along the way and really like would like to share what I learned with you guys. Okay, so while I have the blackout, I'm going to go ahead. Well, actually, let's do her hair first. Let's do her hair first. I changed my mind. For her hair, I used brown and dark brown. When you're working with zigs, you always want to use your darkest color first, in my opinion. This is the way I do it, and I want to make, make it clear. I am not an expert. I'm not hired by Zig. I don't work for Zig. Um, I just love these markers, and uh, I'm sharing you know how I do it with you guys in case you like how I do it and want to follow along with me. Um, but so, so I'm just kind of teaching you how I do it. Um, 
But what I did is I laid down my dark brown first. Now I'm coming in with the brown and just sort of mixing it in a circular motion into the white space. Of course, not covering up the entirety of the white space because we want our water brush to do that. And now I'm going to take my water brush and fill in the rest of the white space. And we have a really pretty mix there. And it creates a really gorgeous hair color, in my opinion. This is one of my favorite brunette combinations. Um, and again, it's just dark brown and brown. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit of highlight at the top under her hat and at the bottom. So kind of the little middle section is where I feel that the, um, the highlight is going to be. So now we'll just come down with our water brush here and fill this space in. And I just think that that's lovely. I really, really love how you get almost that third color in the middle uh, when you're working with the zigs. Now I'm going to come over and do the other side of her hair. And as you can see as I'm going along, I'm definitely working in sections. Um, like I said earlier, this just helps keep me organized with my shading. Um, and I just find that it works best for me to do it this way. But if you want to put more marker down, by all means, go for it. Do whatever works for you. That's something that I have really found in, in doing this um, you know, this coloring and, and crafting for so many years, you really have to find the technique that works for you, that, that you're most comfortable with, and then just roll with it. Do lots of practicing. It's only by practicing that you're gonna really get the hang of any markers, really, but especially these zigs, they are so easy to work with, I promise. But you do have to practice a little bit just to get the hang of it. Okay, so there's her pretty hair, and you can see, hopefully the camera's picking it up. Let me bring it up here, you can see, yeah, it is. You can see the highlights, how you have lights and darks spaces um, in her hair and that's what we're looking for that's all we're looking for guys and I think that um, it's awesome that you can do that with just two markers all right now I'm going to do her cloak and I'm just using black again on her cloak so I'm just going to put some down remember I have that light source coming in from the left so the right of the cloak the cloak is certainly going to be darker there's a little bit of a um, indent here so also you can't just just um, think about your light source. Also use your your drawing, your illustration as a guide for you in determining where you want to put shadows. Because if, for example, in this illustration, it has that little indent right down here. And that's showing you that it's kind of folded. The cloak is kind of folded in on itself. And so there's going to be a little shadow there. So I definitely like to use the illustration. I kind of look at it before I start coloring to really give me an idea of what the illustrator has, um, the artist has kind of envisioned as to where there may be some shadows and some highlights. So definitely just take a look at your illustration as well and that will really help you when you're trying to figure out where to put your shading. Okay, so there is the right, the left side rather of her cloak. There we have it. There's some shading there on that side. I went a little bit out of the lines again, so watch. We're just going to take a clean, the clean end of our water brush Push that color in and it will eventually erase. Sometimes you have to go at it three or four times, um, but it will. If you keep dabbing it up with a paper towel, it will eventually erase that color that you, um, if you erroneously get it out of the lines, which I do all the time. <laughs> I don't know why I can't stay in the lines sometimes, but it happens. So that's a great um, tip that you're able to, to use that clean water brush to really erase your, your mistakes. That's awesome. So I'm still just working on the cloak here. Now I'm going to do um, this inside part right here. So by her dress, of course, it's certainly there's going to be a shadow that hits from where that dress is and up against, you know, her, her shoes and her, um, her little leggings here and along the bottom and of course along the side of the broom as well So basically there's a lot of shadow on this right side But we still want to show just a little bit of shading. We want to we still want a few little light spaces So there'll be a little bit of shading but not as not as dramatic because again This is the right the right part which is the furthest away from our our light source And it's also the inside of her cloak which is certainly going to be darkest So there'll be a little bit of shading as you can see here but certainly not um, super dramatic shading. And that doesn't always have to be super dramatic shading. It just depends on what you're coloring. But you can see here, we have a little bit of light source in there and right along here. So we still have a little bit. Now we're going to do this little section of her cloak. And then just use the water brush. Right, 
and now we just have this inside section over here to do. And as you can see, when you put the marker down, there's absolutely no magic to how you put that color down. You're literally just putting a line of color down. Nothing special about that at all. Um, even less fancy than if you were coloring. I mean, it's super, super easy. Now I'm going to quickly do her dress. I feel this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to go a little bit quicker now. And I'm using violet and light violet for her dress. The violet is, of course, the darkest of the two colors, so I'm going to start with that. I'm going to come down um, the left side because it's right up against the cloak along the top because, again, that cloak will create a shadow, and then along the right side. And now we kind of have these little pleats, so I just drew a line up on each side of the pleat there. You can see that little triangle at the bottom of her dress. To me, that symbolized a little pleat. So it's not going to be very dramatic in this, but it, I still wanted to kind of show that the dress had a little bit of a pleating there. So all I'm doing now is I'm taking the light violet, mixing it with this violet color, and I'm going to do that with these little lines that I drew here as well. And right now it looks awful, right? But just wait till I get that water going here. So right now it looks absolutely dreadful. But once I start mixing the colors of the markers with the water, it's going to look beautiful. And you're going to have a little bit of those pleat lines in there as well. And so I thought that was, I was actually just playing. I didn't know if I could make it work. That's something I used to always do with my Copics. And I wasn't sure I could make it work with the watercolors, but it's certainly not as dramatic as it would be with the Copics, but I think it still is the same idea. And it's, and it just gives just a little bit of an idea of where those pleats were. It's a little bit more defined there. Um, and I really like that look. And hopefully the camera is picking it up because it, it, you can faintly see it. And I do think it's really nice. I'm also going to be doing her little boots in that same purple combination. So again, coming down with the violet and then mixing that with the light violet. All right, and then we'll take our water brush here and just mix it all together and fill in that white space. Super easy. Okay, now for the broom, the top of the broom, I did brown and light brown. And this is really, really easy. All I did was I just kept the dark color mostly to the right side, mostly to the right side of this broom, because again, our light source is coming in from the left. But I did a little spike, couple spikies like so. All right, and then I came in with my light brown, which is my lightest color. Just mix it a little bit with that brown. And then you're going to take your water brush, of course, and fill in the rest of the space. And it gives it this really fun look. This is also a good hair color combination as well. If you wanted your little witch to have um, lighter hair, this is a great combination for light brunette hair as well. Or kind of like a dirty blonde, depending if you put less brown in, it could almost be blondish hair. So there's your broom. And then for the broom handle, I just use dark brown. And you have to be really careful with this. This is a very thin, um, obviously, little space here. So I just put a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom and then took my water brush and pulled it down and up and met in the middle. And as you can see there, you get a really nicely shaded little handle. This is why it's important to have a very fine tipped either water brush or paintbrush, whichever route you go. You want it to be very fine tips because that is a very thin space there. And of course you want to be able to get into it. For her shirt, I'm gonna pull back the, um, the little original image here. You can see on the little shirt underneath her dress, I did orange and green. So I'm just gonna show you on the shirt how I did that. I'm not gonna do the stockings just for time. So I just put a little bit of orange down and pulled that out. And then I used light green on the other stripes. And again, I did the same, just alternating on the stockings. So you just pull that out and you have a cute little mix there. And then of course, for her little band in the middle of her head, I also used violet and light violet for that as well. And I'll just do one section just to show you kind of what the idea of how to do this here. Pull it in the middle. 
There you go. So that's you just continue that around with the band. And then I used just yellow for the little buckle. I didn't even blend it. It's such a thin space. I just used the marker by itself to blend that little buckle in the middle of her hat there. So now all that I'm gonna all that's left that I want to show you super quick is how to do the skin tone. I use blush and flesh color for Caucasian skin. Blush is the darkest, so I'm going to start with that. And again, we want the majority of the dark color on the right side. And of course, underneath that hat, brim of that hat is certainly going to have a shadow as well. Then we're gonna come in with the flesh color and in a circular motion, just kind of mix it together with that blush. And then we will be using our water brush, of course, to just mix it all together. And there you have it, beautifully shaded skin. I'm going to use Autumn's, um, what is this, almond pink now for some little blush on her cheeks so i just after i get it all of the face i'll blend it how i like i come in with some blush put it down in circular motions on each cheek and then i just use my water brush and i just go over the cheek part just the blush that way i don't mix it in with the entire rest of the face but it still kind of blends into the face how i wanted to and that's how we do the little coloring of the witch i quickly wanted to show you the pumpkin so i'm just going to do just a little bit of the pumpkin just to show you how you can just use orange to get a beautifully shaded pumpkin i'm just going to go inside of the little lines of the pumpkin and then you just take your water brush just like we've been doing this whole time it's so easy to work with these markers once you get the hang of it just going in a circular motion to blend these these colors the, the orange together and you get that nice shaded lighter orange in the middle and I just think that that's lovely. Okay guys, so that's it for the coloring. When you're done with your um, your water brush or your paintbrush, whichever you choose to use, of course, make sure you clean it off on your paper towel or, or if you're using a brush, clean it off however you clean your paintbrushes. And now just to finish the card up super quick, let me zoom back out for you. As you can see here, I have some um, grass along the bottom. And all I did was I used two of the Lawn Fawn grassy um, hillside borders and I cut them out of black cardstock. Um, I just kind of wanted it to look like grass but at the same time you know show the, the viewer that it's nighttime out so it's like a dark dark grass from the from the um, the nighttime um, and so then I just laid that down there's no dimension on that I did stamp a sentiment from the stamp set and I heat embossed it with white embossing powder and then I just simply adhered everything to that watercolor panel using some uh, foam tape and then adhered the entire thing to an A2 size card front, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And of course I did add some sequins as well. So that's it guys. I really hope that you loved this card and you'll give some of these techniques a try. Don't forget, I will link in the description box below uh, the video to where I created this exact watercolor background. So you can take a look at that. And then hopefully you got some coloring tips from the video, today's video. So thanks again so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye.